mind as to its truth when weighed against the evidence received in opposition thereto. There has been reported the testimony of certain witnesses who purport to be skilled in their line of endeavor. Such witnesses are known in law as expert witnesses. An expert witness is one who is skilled in any certain art, business, or profession, possessed of peculiar knowledge, required by study, observation, and practice, you are instructed that you may consider the testimony of these witnesses and give it such weight and value as you think it should have, but the weight and value to be given their testimony is for you to determine. You are not required to surrender your own judgment to that of any person testifying as an expert or give controlling effect to the opinion of an expert for the testimony of an expert like that of any other witness is to be received by you and given such weight and value as you deem it is entitled to receive. Ready? Gentlemen of the jury, you are instructed that in this case, the burden of proof rests upon the plaintiff to prove the material allegations of her petition by the fair preponderance of the evidence and if she has failed to do this, your verdict should be for the defendant. By the fair preponderance of the evidence is not meant necessarily the greater number of witnesses, but it is that proof which satisfies your mind as to its truth when weighed against the evidence received in opposition thereto. There has been introduced the testimony of certain witnesses who purport to be skilled in their line of endeavor. Such witnesses are known in law as expert witnesses. An expert witness is one who is skilled in any certain art, business, or profession, possessed of peculiar knowledge required by study, observation, and practice. You are instructed that you may consider the testimony of these witnesses and give it such weight and value as you think it should have, but the weight and value to be given their testimony is for you to determine. 
you are not required to surrender your own judgment to that of any person testifying as an expert or give controlling effect to the opinion of an expert for the testimony of an expert like that of any other witness is to be received by you and given such weight and value as you deem it is entitled to receive. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the issues in this case are issues of fraud and deceit, fraudulent representation, or fraud as the term is here used may be defined as false statements of material facts in a transaction made by one party to another made with knowledge of their falsity or made as positive statements of fact without reference to their truth or falsity and made with the intent that the other party shall act thereon. When such other party believes such statements and relies thereon and is induced thereby to enter into a contract or transaction and the statements are false and damage results to him, then such statements are fraud which entitles the party injured to recover damages. Fraud is never presumed and must always be proved, and the burden of proof rests upon the parties asserting the fraud. The defendant in this case to prove by a fair preponderance of the evidence that is the greater weight of the evidence that he was defrauded as claimed by him. If you find the evidence on this question evenly balanced or that it preponderates in favor of the plaintiff, then you will find a verdict in plaintiff's favor. In order to recover on the ground of fraud or fraudulent representations, the party claiming to have been defrauded must have believed and relied upon the false statements made by the other party in the transaction. And if the party claiming fraud had knowledge of the real facts in connection with the transaction in question and relied upon his own knowledge and information and did not rely upon 
the statements made to him, then there is no fraud. <clears throat> because the party asserting the fraud is not deceived. Try that one one more time. A couple more minutes. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the issues in this case are issues of fraud and deceit, fraudulent representation or fraud, as the term is here used may be defined as false statements of material facts in a transaction made by one party to another, made with knowledge of their falsity, or made as positive statements of fact without reference to their truth or falsity, and made with the intent that the other party shall act thereon. When such other party believes such statements and relies thereon and is induced thereby to enter into a contract or transaction and the statements are false and damage results to him, then such statements are fraud, which entitles the party injured to recover damages. <clears throat>